Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark my iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered.
have our minute for mission. <laughs> Good morning. Well, I know y'all are tired of seeing me up here, but this is a project that, or an organization that is near and dear to me, Presbyterian Women. So, I won't be preaching to all of you, except that you can be encouragers to your significant others and spouses. Uh, Presbyterian Women will gear up another study session beginning in September. We have two circles. One meets in the evening at 6 on the third Tuesday evening. It's a potluck supper, and um, I won't tell all our secrets. But anyway, there's some other things that go along with our, our lessons. The other circle meets on the second Tuesday morning at 9.45 here at the church. Recently, I attended the Alabama-Mississippi Conference for Women, and I had the honor and pleasure of meeting Judy Fletcher, who has written this study for next year, Come to the Rivers. Well, of course, you know, immediately, Living Waters for the World, Rivers, got my attention. She was excellent. This study will take us from creation to revelations. And I think if you will get involved with Presbyterian women, this will be such a worthwhile effort for you that uh, this Bible study is going to be outstanding. And I don't say that about many of them. <laughs> a lot of them we have had to tweak to make it uh, work for us. But this one I think we can really delve into and enjoy and learn together. So I invite you, if you've not been active in Presbyterian women, give it a try. There are no commitments that we um, place on you other than we want you to come for the fun and the fellowship and the Bible study that we all enjoy. So I'll see you all in September. Oh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that on Saturday, August the 29th at Memorial Presbyterian in Montgomery, we will have our fall gathering, which will be the Eufaula Auburn area and the Montgomery Selma area. And we'll get together to have a brief meeting, a Bible study, and lunch together. So I think this will be great, and I'll be looking for y'all to pack the cars. So I'll talk to you all later. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. And that is one of the things that uh, is one of the great aspects of our church community is programs like Presbyterian Women. It really is all-encompassing. It includes fellowship. It includes study. It includes... Uh, a spiritual journey together, which is what we're about. So please, if you, I know they're always welcoming more and they have a great time. I've conveniently slipped through a, a few times just to interrupt enough to pass through. And they're, they're I, I feel like I'm interrupting when I do because there's so much good stuff going on in there. So <laughs> I have done that. <laughs> good food, good food. Well, I, at this time, I invite you to please, if you'll sign and pass those friendship pads that you'll find in your pews, uh, let, us, let us know that you're here. Um, I do want to also, you'll hear a name in the prayers of the people that you may not know, so I want to go ahead and highlight Jordan Aubrey is a young man who, about 16 years old, he was in an accident last night and he's not expected to make it. So we, we, want to, we want to lift Jordan's family in prayer today as well, but just keep them in mind as we're going through this service today. Uh, let's see, other than that, the, and I'm going to try to start doing this. Uh, we have, I'm sure most of y'all are aware, we kind of have our little lunch bunch that likes to go out for lunch right after church. I'm hoping that we'll maybe, I know where we're going today, everybody's going to Fendel Hall. But other times there are other places, so hopefully we'll be able to announce that at this time so that if anybody wants to come along, there's always, just like Presbyterian women and anything else in the church, everyone's always welcome. That's who we are and that's what we do. So with that said, I do want to highlight that 
Choir rehearsal begins again September 9th. So we'll, we'll look forward to that, and that's going to be happening at 6.30 on Wednesday nights right after WOW program. Our topic this week for talking theology on Thursday is a godly argument, and that's, that can go in several different directions, but basically we're going to start off by looking at scripture about conflict and ways to resolve it because ultimately God doesn't want us in conflict but at the same time we need to stand up for where we believe we're called to be in in particular issues so it's a way of bringing a community together now this time uh, oh I'll also remind everyone this Friday and Saturday Friday is Presbytery meeting right is it this Friday yes this Friday is Presbytery meeting and right after they're having what they call the main event. And if you can attend this, I encourage you to sign up. If you haven't already signed up, go ahead and, and the information is here. I can get it to you. It's on our Presbytery's website. There's gonna be lots of workshops on Saturday. So it, it's, it's a great time to be around other Presbyterians, a great time to share in your personal journey with others and learn from others, so. Now let us continue to prepare ourselves for worship as we go to God confessing our sins, confessing to the one who hears our voice and is deeply moved by our distress. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of peace, we have rejected your redemption and forged our own way. We hang between heaven and earth, caught up in our own thoughts. We have held fast to falsehood, deceiving others and ourselves. We have sinned against you and done violence to others. Bitterness and wrath, anger and wrangling, slander and malice consume us. Evil runs rampant in our hearts. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. Our soul waits in hope for your word to redeem us, so that we may begin anew. Amen. People of God, hope in the Lord. God in Christ has forgiven each of us. God has redeemed us from all our iniquities through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us as the living bread for the life of the world assures us forgiveness. Amen. Once again, let us go to God in prayer. God of daybreak, our souls wait for your light more than those who watch for the morning. Let your Holy Spirit illumine our hearts with the light of your redemption. A new day, a new life in Christ. Amen. We have uh, two readings today. Our first reading comes from 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8. I'm going to set this up a little bit because we're, we're coming into this and, and kind of partway through the story. The, the he himself in this is Elijah. You see, Elijah has, has been on the most wanted list through Jezebel. Jezebel and Ahab are currently in power, and 
Elijah, at this point, a after Jezebel has already executed, ordered the execution of various prophets of the Lord, Elijah came up and said, okay, fine. Let's, they, they had a little contest, and some of us may remember this, uh, but they had a little contest where they had 450 prophets of Baal and others, and they had 400 prophets of the Lord. And they set two altars up. They said, this is the competition. Now, you, you set up as many as you need to out here Cut your animal accordingly, put everything, and pray for your God to rain down fire. And I'm going to do the same. So they did. And of course theirs didn't light. Well then, after it, it goes into great description about how Elijah prepared the altar and, and carefully stacked the wood. Had a trench dug around it where there was seed placed. And after everything was set, the meat was on this nice, dry, kindling wood. He said, now douse it in water. They doused it. Okay, do that again. They doused it again. One more time. They doused it again. Three times they doused this altar in water. So that the, the trench they had filled with seed was now also full of water. The wood was soaking wet. He prays to Yahweh, and Yahweh rains down fire. Thus, the God of Abraham triumphed over Baal. Immediately following that, Elijah turns to the other prophets of the Lord and says, okay, it's time that we decide now. We will be followers of Yahweh. We will give up this other way. So it's they, and they killed the, other, the opposing prophets. Jezebel didn't like this at all. Okay, this was not what she was intending. So now she has issued a warrant, basically, for the life of Elijah. So here's our reading today. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. Is it enough now, O Lord? Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly the angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too great for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Oreb, the Mount of God. This ends the Old Testament reading today. Now our New Testament reading, our second reading, comes from John 6, verse 35, then 41 through 51. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that 
anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the, bread, the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, first, we're going to... Let's look at this prophet for a few minutes. Elijah. He's, he's one of the most notable prophets from the Old Testament. And this is one, of, one rare glimpse into the life of such a prophet. It seems to me that he's suffering from a degree of depression. Here he is, he's been trying to do what's right. He's been trying to live according to the law. He's trying to follow the instructions of God. And now he's fleeing for his life. He's lost everything. He knows that there's no chance that he can ever go back where he came from as long as Jezebel lives and, and all of this is in place. He's a wanted man on the run. To the point that it even makes a, it says very clearly here, he's, I just, in my head, I picture this scraggly bush of a tree out in the middle of a desert, just nothing else around, no shade, and he's just sitting under there all by himself, wishing to die, asking God to let him die. But what God does is provide some guidance, provide some nourishment, provides some comfort from this angel. This angel comes to him and gives him what he needs to continue, gives him what he needs to be sustained, gives him what he needs to live. Get up and eat, he said. And there was the bread and the water that he needed. Then he went back to sleep. And again, here's the bread and the water that he needed. Then he continues on. Now, when we look at this New Testament lesson today, and Jesus is saying very clearly how important, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks now, how important bread is to us. I still haven't baked a, you know, got one of those bread machines in here to bake the bread in the sanctuary yet, but that's on my to-do list so that we can get the full effect. But how important bread is. But you see, the bread that Jesus is talking about is not the literal bread. It's the knowledge of Christ. It's the knowledge of who Christ is, where Christ came from, and why. That's the bread of life. That's what sustains us. That's what brings us forward in life. That's what helps us to understand our own problems. Hopefully pushes us to be empathetic toward others, as we talked about recently. When, when Christ, it says Christ had compassion for them, it meant that, that he was putting himself in their shoes. Having compassion is not just handing them a dollar and walking away. Having compassion is going down there and installing the living water system with your own hands. There's some compassion. There's having some compassion for folks. Compassion is on uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday when we did local mission work. And we were digging in those play yards, preparing them for the kids, fixing them so that kids can play safely. Yes, there's, there's the compassion. Now how 
these two fit together? How do they come together? There's lots of talk about bread. Clearly, this bread that Elijah is, is enjoying is more than simple nourishment. It's knowledge that God's not giving up on him yet. It's knowledge that he needs to keep going. It's help in his time of trouble. You see, one of the things that our society tends to shirk and turn away from and, and never wants to say out loud is when folks have depression or going through depression. When folks are going through a situation that's bigger than they are and they just can't deal with it. We tend to have a very flippant response about it. Well, it'll be fine. Just get over it. It'll be okay. Just smile. It'll get better. Well, if you've ever really been through depression, you'll know it goes much deeper than that. It goes clear to the bone. You see, in depression, it affects the way that you eat, it affects the way that you sleep. It affects how your brain, the chemistry in your brain works, your thought processes. They don't connect like they used to. It disturbs sleep. You could have either insomnia or never be able to really wake up all the way. Serious changes in appetite. Various eating disorders. A feeling of worthlessness or of guilt. Getting angry over no reason or small reasons or just not caring anymore. It, it could also genuinely cause pain in your body and you just don't know why it's there. Now, our reaction sometimes with folks like this is, well, it's going to be okay. It's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, it, just give it time. Time heals all wounds. That's this thing we like to say. Time heals all wounds. But the wound is still there. The scar is there. And sometimes it comes up again. You see, I'm going to throw out a few numbers here. Globally, there are 350 million people who are altered by some form of depression. 11% of them are adolescents, not even 18 years old yet. 70% of women are more likely than men, or that's the percentage that women are more likely than men to experience depression in their lifetime. 16 million in the U.S. adults have had at least one major episode of depression in 2012. This makes up about 7% of the adults in the country. These are big numbers. This is a lot of people. But this is the number that worries me more. The percentage of Americans with major depression who don't seek treatment of any kind, 50%. So half the people who are experiencing this don't even seek the help that they need. It may be as a friend of theirs, maybe as someone who is part of their community, we can see these signs. We can see these feelings of sadness or tearfulness or, or where they're just separating themselves, isolating themselves. Random angry outbursts, irritability, loss of interest in life itself. Maybe just maybe we can see something like this. Now, what are we called to do as a response? How do you approach something like that? We're not psychiatrists. 
We're not all counselors. What do we do with that kind of information when we have it? What can we do? Well, we have something as a community of faith. We have this bread that Christ has presented to us. We have the bread of life. It's part of who we are and what we do and why we do it. What would happen if we were able to be that angel as that angel is for Elijah, if we could be that angel for someone who's going through a situation like this? How powerful would that be? How comforting would that be? And sometimes, sometimes, you know that, that scrap of bread or a cup of water or a cup of coffee or whatever it would be, it can, it can make that impact. It can make someone realize that, well, this is part of the bread of life. This is part of what it means to be in a Christian community or invited into a Christian community. Because, folks, we live in a world where we're affected by things from every side. We're affected by our health, our health of our loved ones, death, various things that can happen in our lives, jobs, financial issues, whether it's through bankruptcy or foreclosures, or sometimes it's just a really bad day. You know, you ever had one of those? You know, when, when you get up in the morning and it's just not right. You know that, it, oh, this, this day's rough. I got up on the wrong side of bed. It's just going to be a long day. And then one thing after another. And it's just a bad day all day long. Well, folks who are going through depression often have weeks like that. Often have weeks like that. But how great would it be to be able to share the bread of life with them? How great would it be to help them realize that God wants the best for them, just like wants the best for us to be a part of this community, to share the bread of life, to know of the salvation that we have through Christ, and to know of the community that we have here so that we can embrace others in their times of trouble. I have, uh, I've had a couple of different friends who I had... I had heard the word panic attack before. And uh, what's, what, there's another phrase. Basically, not, not um, bipolar, but would just fall into very, very dark depressions. And it would be coupled with these panic attacks. And it could happen in the middle of a class. And there was nothing we could do. All we could do was clear the, the classroom and we went out and, and prayed for this person and we, anyone who had stayed, even friends at that point, unless they were a professional at helping for this situation, were not helping. Hers was an extreme case. But she knew she needed help and she sought it. And, she, and, and it makes a difference. She knew she needed help and to do things a certain way, and when she didn't, things would happen. But we don't always, I say this to say, we don't always have control over how we're responding to something. We don't always know how we're going to respond to something until we're in that situation. And sometimes, despite whatever education or background or experience we have you could be put in a situation where you just start reacting and you don't know how to control it your body starts taking over heart races and anxiety comes in and sometimes it just takes you 
can have someone sometimes who just kind of helps you grab that hand and just say, well, just take a deep breath. Let's gain some perspective. And that's what we do here, hopefully. We gain that perspective. But one of the key things here is to realize when there's a problem and realize that we need help. There is nothing shameful about admitting an illness like depression. There's nothing shameful about that because you can be helped in so many ways. Lots of folks, we, we see someone who is going through homelessness or financial distress or whatever, and we don't know what to say. Well, sometimes just letting them know that you're there. Letting them know that you're their friend. Letting them know that they're not alone sitting under the bush in the middle of the desert. Letting them know that they're part of this community and embracing them for that. So, I would encourage you, when, we, when you see someone who's having that bad day, just take a minute and let's, let's just get a cup of coffee. How are you doing? Genuine concern. You know, we always do that. Uh, it's the southern thing. We like to say, well, hello, how are you doing? Well, oh, I'm fine. And you? Oh, I'm fine. Everybody's fine. We're all fine. We're always fine. We're not always fine. And don't be afraid to share otherwise with the person that can help. It's okay to not be fine. That's a hard thing to think of, isn't it? But it's okay to not be fine. It's okay to need someone to help you. If we didn't need help in some way, shape, or form, what brings us to church? If we didn't need help in some way, shape, or form, why do we seek Christ? If we didn't need help in some way, shape, or form, why be here and part of this community? It's a great thing. So friends... Remember, as Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Let's share that bread. Please stand with me as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 14 in the front of your hymn book. Traditional. Friends, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we lift our voice to you, drawn by your steadfast love and confident in your great power to redeem. We pray for the church, those in need, and all your creation. We wait for you, Lord, in your word we hope. Bless your church to extend mercy to the outcast, kindness to the stranger, and forgiveness to the erring. We wait for you, Lord, in your word we hope. Redeem your creation from the wilderness of sin and death to the flourishing of righteousness and life. We wait for you, Lord, in your word, we hope. Restore ju justice with mercy and truth, with trust in our nations and our neighbors. We wait for you, Lord, in your word, we hope. Raise up those who cry from the depths of poverty, oppression, illness, and despair. We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. Help us to put away bitterness and wrath, anger and slander, and be kind to one another, living in love as you have loved us. We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. Now, Lord, let your love embrace these we now call to you aloud, also to those that weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, we pray especially for Jordan Aubrey's family. If it is his time for transition, Lord, we pray that it be peaceful. It is always devastating when someone dies, but Lord, especially in their youth, be with this family and comfort them. Help them know that they are too part of this body of Christ and that we lift them in prayer this day. Lord, we pray for Tom, Betty, Grady, Mike, Nick, Harris, Nathan, Marion, Barbara, Lonnie, Nancy, Jane, Mary, and Lisa. Holy One, we know that there are many at work throughout this magnificent world that you created. Many who are at work doing the work of Christ in this world. We pray for all of those, especially the Zamorano family and the Kay family. We continue to lift to you the communities that are served with the living waters installed by this church in your name. We pray for Los Hijos, Atillo, Maragorta, Limino, Mara de Pletano, Los Carales, Pedra Blanca Abajo. Lord, we know that this is a world in turmoil, that there's always so much going on, and we are so grateful to be in a place where we have such an excellent military who dedicate their lives to protecting us and our rights. We pray for them and their families. We pray especially for Bill, Reed, Lamar, Brooks, and Taylor. We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. Now nourishing God, to you we commit our prayers through Christ, the bread of life, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, each and every one of us. So as beloved children, let us be imitators of God. Let us present our tithes and offering. that you welcome us in our brokenness, that you accept us for, with our faults. Lord, we know that all are welcome in Christ, and we pray that these gifts today might be used to help others to feel whole again, that this contribution can help your church further comfort those who are broken. All this we lift in Christ. Amen.
as we continue seeking to know Christ, inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit to make Christ known in the world around us. May we do so sharing the love of God with kindness and humility, patiently seeking unity. This day and forevermore, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. have been viewing the Sunday morning worship service from the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama. The First Presbyterian Church is located in Eufaula, Alabama at 201 North Randolph Avenue, Eufaula, Alabama 36027. The church phone is 334-687-2523. That number again, 334-687-2523. Three, the church staff is Pastor Rev. Brian Copeland, Director of Music and Organist Steve Hawkins, Church Administrator Renee Nolan, Sexton Veronica Curry, Pastor Rev. Brian Copeland, 